Hey, uh, I'm Steve. You probably know me from the sales video you just watched. Uh, welcome to Data. I wanted to congratulate you and give you the quick walkthrough on how to get these things actually set up. Shortcuts are a little weird if you've never used them before, so uh, I will be making them less weird for you today by walking through it. I'm going to start screen recording on my phone here um, and show you some things. We're only going to be using two apps in this demo, real quick demo, uh, and those are files and shortcuts. Uh, they are already on your phone. You may not have ever used them. They're not very commonly used. Files is the equivalent of Finder on your Mac, basically. It is literally just a file browser. And then Shortcuts is an app uh, that used to be called Workflow that Apple bought a couple years back that lets you automate anything, set up custom Siri integrations, do a lot of cool accessibility stuff. And so that's why we built data on Shortcuts. It lets you do amazing things. Um, so I am going to set up my data as if it has never been used before. It's super easy to do a hard reset like this. You just go to iCloud Shortcuts folder and you just delete all your files. Um, I would actually recommend moving them into a backup folder like this, but for the sake of brevity during our demo, I've deleted all of them. Uh, and then at that point, once all your files are gone, all you got to do is activate data, and it will run as if it's brand new. So this is the setup process for activate data. It is crazy easy. Uh, here's a little description of what the process involves. You can see it's five steps. I'll let you read that if you want to. You're going to see me do them all. Hey here. Steve, so first good you enter to meet your name. You. What would you like to call me? Something out loud. And then. You enter Data's name. You can change it to Jarvis or whatever you want. Um, and then you just enter your phone number, same as you did on the website. Super easy. And that's all the logging in you have to do. You're good for life. OK? And then uh, you want to do uh, a custom API key if you're into that. Now, if you don't know what an API key is, it's basically just a fancy way of logging in for developers. It allows the computer to access your account with your permission without you having to log in all the time. Uh, and it is like ChatGPT, but it's actually billed separately and it's a separate product from OpenAI uh, than ChatGPT. So your ChatGPT plus subscription is not involved. Um, if you want your own API key, you can hit cancel here and you can go over to Safari and you go to platform.openai. In fact, you'll want to log into platform.openai. The login screen looks just like ChatGPT. Then you hit this menu. It's a little, it's a little hard to find it, but you hit this menu and then this menu. And then you hit API keys and then you create a new secret key and you can name it whatever you want. And then it will show you that key uh, just like this. And you have one chance to copy and paste it before it hides it forever. It's like a password, so protect it. Don't share it with anyone. And then you go start Hey Data and you just paste it in. Super simple. So I'm going to. Start over. Steve, good to meet you. What would you like to call me? I would like to call you Data. <laughs> okay. And then you paste in your API key and bada bing bada boom, you're good to go. Now you're using Data, it's that easy. So there are a couple other things that it's gonna do during setup. The first is that it's gonna install these shortcuts. Uh, let me just tell you what they do as they go by here. So edit data mems lets you edit your memories. In short and long-term memories, these shortcuts, data automatically runs these to compress. If you've had a long conversation with it, you know how ChatGPT kind of forgets things sometimes? Data compresses your memory, so it never forgets anything. It just basically summarizes what you've talked about. It does that automatically in the background. Current situation is a way to update your goals every week or two, so data knows what you're up to. And then these two shortcuts, cal to text and weather, or I think it's like, yeah, weather with dates, these run automatically in the background to pull in your calendar, your reminders, and the weather locally. So you never have to tap on those. They just run when data runs. And same thing with the OpenAI cost calculator. This creates a spreadsheet of your costs always on your phone so you can check how much data is costing you. And then Lander cost tracker is if you're using our API key, that tracks how much your costs are. And same thing, creates another spreadsheet on your phone. Make data guides does the exact same thing the website does. It creates a beautiful Notion page with an answer uh, from web searches. Hey Data is, is like using Siri. It lets you talk to data. Summarize is pretty self-explanatory. This is used during initialize to summarize your responses, but you can also use it to summarize anything into one line. Transcribe with Whisper is a shortcut that allows you to transcribe any audio file into text. And that's what shortcuts like Hey Data use. They use that shortcut to make audio text and then feed it to the AI. And then initialize data. I know this is a lot all at once. You don't have to remember any of it. I just wanted to explain some of it to you while we're sitting here anyway, waiting for all of it to install. Then initialize, you don't have to tap on this. This is the thing that runs to first set up data for you. So 
Once all your core shortcuts are installed, you should press this blue button, by the way, on every single one of these as they go by. I didn't because I'm just demoing it for you and I already have them installed. But you want to hit add a shortcut and then if it prompts you to replace, you want to hit replace. Then you'll be done updating. It'll prompt you with this sort of thing. Uh, now, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to skip initialization. I'd recommend you just dive right into it. It's super fun. Initialization is about a 15 minute conversation you have with data about what you want data to do and what you want it to be good at and what you want to use AI for. And then it will be your personalized AI assistant. Until then, it'll be a little bit more generic. Um, if you skip, it'll just ask you the first time you use data tomorrow. Uh, then up next is the next step of setup. There are only five steps. It's pretty quick. So we're already on like step two or three now. Um, you'll see here that data is um, now going to do updates. And this is where it'll prompt you to install all of the rest of the shortcuts. I'm going to skip this again for the sake of time and also because I already have all of the shortcuts installed. But again, you just want to tap through those and hit install on each one. And whenever we get updates, they'll come to you the same way. Like it'll just pop up and you can hit update, add shortcut, and then always hit replace when a shortcut update pops up. Never hit keep both. If you make any customizations to these shortcuts, I recommend you duplicate them first, then customize them so that you can always overwrite things when you update. So don't, don't hit keep both, hit replace always. Okay. Um, then I think we're already on step five. That was pretty quick. Uh, then it's going to ask me, uh, it's going to let me talk to data. Hi data, what can you do? So activate data is the way that you text data. Whenever you tap on that, it'll bring up a text dialogue and you can text back and forth with data and have a conversation as long as you want. It'll just keep prompting you for a reply. You can hit cancel whenever you want to be done replying. And this is um, something you'll see as you use data to start with. You see every notification lets you know how much that reply costs. And then it Props, it pops up prompts like this for the first, I don't know, hour or two you're using it, maybe a day or two, depending on how much you use it, how fast. It's going to ask you to allow all, a lot of things right off the bat. And all this doing, all this is doing is, uh, this is like a default shortcut privacy feature that I can't turn off, unfortunately. But once you hit allow all on uh, each way that you've used data, you, you uh, won't have to do it again. So... This mostly dies down by the first day. It'll still happen every once in a while from time to time, but for the most part, it's gone. All right, so here's the situation. Isn't this cool? So it already got back to me. I'm a superhuman level machine intelligence. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. So it's describing who it is to me. That's very fun. I can continue that conversation, but I don't want to right now. If instead of texting data, you want to talk to data, I recommend you use this shortcut called Hey Data. And you can hop into any shortcut and you can just tap these three dots and then tap this and tap add to home screen. And it'll just add it to your home screen like this where you have an app now that is that shortcut. The final step of initialization is this. It's gonna ask you how much automation you want. I always click maximum automation, but if you click reliability, maybe it'll only send emails and surf the web. You can always go to commands.txt in your phone and see which commands it has and what they do. Just read through that. I'm gonna click maximum automation and then I'm gonna go look at my files app. Like I mentioned, we would use the files app. So if we now go look at commands.txt, there's a list of every command data can run in here and a description of how it works. And if you make your own shortcut, you can add to data's abilities just by writing a new line in, in this file. So pretty cool. Um, but instead of getting into that, it's a little too in the weeds for the first setup video. There are other videos that cover all that. Uh, now I'm just gonna show how you can talk to data if you wanna have a conversation and then we'll wrap it up. Hey data, um, I want to do something fun tomorrow. Would you add something cool to my calendar just based on how the weather looks and what's going on? Data knows how to use uh, commands on your phone, so it can do a bunch of stuff. It can surf the web, it can send emails, it can uh, make playlists, uh, it can reply to your texts. Uh, in this case, I'm hoping it will just add something to my calendar with a little itinerary in the notes section. We'll see how it does. It might want to br browse the web first as well because I mentioned other stuff that's going on. Oh, nope, it's going to add it straight to my calendar. That's great news. So I'll go ahead and hit the green check mark and let it run that command. It's going to ask me to allow all because it's new. And there we go. A fun thing to do 
in Colorado Springs. Visit Garden of the Gods. Sure. Based on so the weather forecast here. and your location, how about adding a visit to the Garden of the Gods to your calendar tomorrow? It's a beautiful natural landmark in Colorado Springs. Cool. You can hit cancel whenever you're done with your conversation with data. Super simple. And then you can see I have my fun day out scheduled for tomorrow <laughs> with a little itinerary in the notes for the calendar invite. So that's pretty cool. That's how data works. You're all set up and it's working now. You'll get a prompt first thing tomorrow when you use it to finish initialization if you skipped it today. Um, a couple other housekeeping items I would mention. One, I would use data from your home screen like this in a big shortcut. One, because that allows it to run in the background while you're doing other stuff. And then two, because it significantly lengthens the timeout time, because it takes a long time to go do something on your phone. It's not gonna like automatically quit if um, it's run from your home screen. So highly suggest that. And then the second thing, I promised you I would show you how to look into data's memories. So one of the fun parts about data is that everything it does, it stores on your phone in text files. You can find all of them at iCloud shortcuts. That's the default place that data runs from. You can move that if you want to. Um, you can see, for example, all of the prompts are right here in text files, or we can see every request that we've made to data categorized by day. But then there's also two memory files. One is short-term memory, which is the current conversation you're having with data. And that's called clipboard copy. Uh, and the reason it's called clipboard copy is because it's also in your clipboard. Whenever you're done talking to data, your whole conversation is in your clipboard. So you can just paste it and you'll be able to see parts of your conversation or pick them out or edit them or put them in your notes, whatever you wanna do. Whenever you're done talking with data, you can just hit paste. It's in your clipboard. Um, so clipboard copy is a copy of your clipboard um, that's in a text file on your phone. So you can see the conversation we just had is in there. Then I haven't initialized yet, so I don't have long-term memories on this phone yet, but there's also a file called data mems, and that's your long-term memories, which is a series of compressed clipboard copies. So as it summarizes clipboard copy, it turns things into long-term memories where it'll summarize the important points and the things that it wants to remember and the things that you've told it you want to remember. Uh, and it'll put those in data mems and this file will get longer over time and it'll automatically shorten them when it needs to so that it always just works. That's the overview of data. I hope you have a blast using it. Um, if you have any trouble with setup, it's okay. It happens all the time. There is a simple fix that takes just 30 seconds that will allow you to start from scratch like you saw me do right at the beginning of this video. There's a reminder and a walkthrough on how to do that in the setup video, which is super long. It's like an hour. If you watch the first five minutes of that, it'll go through how to reset your data so you can start from scratch. That hour long video has timestamps. I would suggest you not watch the whole thing. It's super long and super boring. But if you wanna to skip to the timestamp you're interested in, like how I have my data set up or how to build your own custom function, all of that's in there. So enjoy the setup video. Thank you for watching Quick Setup with me. This has been a blast. I hope you have a ton of fun with data. I can't wait to hear how you're using it. I'll see you in Notion.